Good morning. I have a happy thought. I've been with my dog now seven weeks, and he's wonderful. Okay, I told Sally I would speak clearly into the mic. Do my best. But I can't see. Okay, here we go. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for having me today. It's really a pleasure to be here. Um, five years ago, I was running a nonprofit organization on Maui. When I accepted the position, the board of directors were quite clear that it might end in six to nine months because of funding issues. In my eternally optimistic way, I poo pooed that, feeling I could write that financial boat, not a problem, in time for the nonprofit to carry on. Well, sure enough, nine months later, I got some great recommendations and my walking papers. So I was unemployed on Maui. <clears throat> hmm, what in the world would I do now? What should I do now? If I could do anything in the world, what would that be? I sat down and wrote a business plan about feeding people free of charge, fresh, organic food. I had worked for a child care food program several years prior, and I truly enjoyed helping others to eat fresh, healthy food. I'm passionate about feeding people. Several months after writing that business plan, I was hired to be the executive director of a food bank on Kauai, like you just heard. Although I gained great experience running that food bank, this job turned out to be quite the nightmare. Uh, <laughs> details of which I won't get into here, but one thing led to another, and I found myself back in Eugene, Oregon, where I had lived since 1989. Back at my house in Eugene and perusing Craigslist one day, I saw a job opportunity in Florence, running a food pantry. I learned that Florence Food Chair had an organic garden from which thousands of pounds of organic produce were given away on a regular basis. My business plan that I had written a few years back about serving organic food to people free of charge flashed in my brain. This was my job. I knew it before the interview. I felt it in my soul. And I cry at the drop of a hat. Does anyone have a Kleenex? <laughs> because of the beautiful music, not because of this. <laughs> no, I love being here. <laughs> I'm so sad that I'm here. No, I'm kidding. Anyway, thank you. I share this story with you because it correlates to number seven of Unitarian Seven Principles of Faith, respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. If I had not become unemployed on Maui, I wouldn't have gotten the job at the food bank on Kauai. And I'm fairly certain that if I had not worked at the food bank on Kauai, I would have not had the opportunity to lead the Florence Food Chair Food Pantry. I believe that everything is interconnected. All experiences, people, animals, everything. If that is true, in fact, then we better respect that fact. Otherwise, we are disrespecting ourselves, negating the interconnectedness of our own lives. I'm currently rereading a wonderful book called The Infinite Self by Stuart Wilde. This book offers tools to tame the ego and let one's spirit take its rightful place of importance in our daily thoughts, words, and actions. One of the concepts in the book is to realize that when things happen, they are not good or bad. They just are. Good and bad are concepts that the ego hangs onto dearly in order to keep control over the spirit. When I lost my job on Maui, my ego screamed, Bad! Oh no! Unemployed at 50, who will hire me at this age? But my spirit reminded me it was just an event, not good or bad. It was just an event. My belief in the interconnected web of all existence helped me to remember that I was unemployed for a reason and that that reason would unfold in the universe's time frame, not mine. Unitarian's principles one and two are values that I hold dear to my heart and they're values that are reflected at Food Share every day. Number one, the inherent worth and dignity of each person. And number two, justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. I am so grateful that I can express my personal values in my place of employment. At Food Share, everyone is treated with respect, equity, dignity, and compassion, including volunteers, staff, and clients. And I'm not really Bible literate, but I know there's a phrase that says, there but for the grace of God go I meaning I could be one of the clients I serve. In fact, when I was unemployed on Maui, I did qualify for food box services. 
I wasn't a freeloader. I was just a college graduate who found herself in a difficult financial situation. At FoodShare, we have clients who could be my mother or my grandmother. There are 20-year-olds who could just as easily be my son. And at FoodShare, we respect all of them and their situation. We could be them. I believe everything happens for a reason, and our clients are in their own situations because of lessons they need to learn. I respect that. I believe we are all just spirits who have been given a temporary body and that we're on this planet in order to learn lessons. We're all struggling with something in our lives, some more than others, but we are all of the same human flesh and as such deserve as much respect, compassion, and equity as anyone on this planet. I'm proud to be part of an organization that values each individual as worthy, and I'm happy to help our clients, my volunteers, and my staff in whatever way I'm called to do. So, FoodShare serves an average of 1,800 clients every month, and this equates to distributing over 50,000 pounds of food every month. We're able to distribute this much food because of the generosity of people like you. For every dollar donated, we are able to access and distribute 65 pounds of food. So your monetary donations go a long way. We're able to purchase food at a deep discount from our partner agency, Food for Lane County in Eugene. <coughs> Excuse me. Food items not typically available from them, however, we must pay full price for. And our items such as canned meat products like chili, tuna, beef stew, macaroni and cheese, hamburger helper, canned fruit, baby formula, milk, and eggs. I've printed out a little wish list card if you'd like to have one of our most needed items. And if you haven't visited our garden lately, I encourage you to do so and call and arrange a tour. It's now grown to 15,000 square feet with 52 raised beds. And it's now affectionately called Food Chair Farm because it's slightly bigger than a garden. <laughs> um, Oh, in closing, none of my presentations would be complete without me asking something of my audience. Today I'd like to ask that the next time you see someone begging on a street corner, tell them of our services. Don't turn your head the other way and look the other, the other direction. Direct them to our pantry. I've printed out some little sheets here with our location, phone number, and hours, so the next time you see someone in need, you can know in your heart that you've showed compassion to these individuals. You were part of the solution. Um, if anybody has any questions, where's your farm located? It's at 2190 Spruce Street, right in back of the pantry. It's totally hidden. You wouldn't even know it's there. Yeah. Yeah. We did a tour a couple of years ago of it. Yeah. And then the group after service, yeah. we all. Oh, right nice. Yeah, it's really How many years ago was it? You should come did check it out. The time they were going to do aqua? That Aquaponics, that's yeah. been uh, bantered back and forth. We haven't started that yet. I'm all for that. I think that would be great. That's where you can grow food um, basically in water, but you have fish, and when the fish poop, it fertilizes the food. I love food. It's great fertilizer. It's great fertilizer. Yes. Well, we we can accept um, commercially prepared food that's well packaged food that has not yet been opened. We can't uh, we can't accept food that's been out like on a buffet. I don't know what they do with that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to thank you for picking this up about yeah. passing around the people you see on the street because I'm always in a quandary when I see them. I feel like yeah, what do you do? Money, you know, I don't know if they're going to use it for right. alcohol. Right, right. You know, you can start a dialogue with them and give them the address and so on. So right, I'm you're sure. welcome. Yeah, I used to hand out my card, then I realized it had my cell phone on it, and I'm like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about the, the mix of clientele? Is it mostly... Oh, family, sure. Mostly <coughs> well, um, well, excuse me... <coughs> 30% of the clients we serve are children, 30% are seniors, um, and they come in all, in all walks of life. We have homeless people, we have working families, um, we have unemployed but not homeless, 
we have a couple teenagers that come by, uh, or at least they did during the school year after school. You can tell they were hungry, and I always used to set aside, and I will again the school year, I set aside a little snack, and I hide it in my office till they come by. Then I give them granola bars. Yeah, so anyway, it's about 30 children, 30 seniors, and a mix of just all walks of life. And generally, how long do people use the services? I mean, are they, are they people that have been doing this for years and will be doing it, or is it they use it a couple times a year? They you know, um, they're they're able to uh, use our pantry 16 times a year. However, I we don't have statistics on how long some of them have been here. Um, we just became automated about a year ago with our computerized intake tracking system. And I, you know, if we went back and picked up all those five by seven cards from 25 years back, we could probably figure that out. I don't know. That's a really good question. Yeah, I know that some people will use our services, like they can use them 16 times a year, and some of them will come in every single week for six weeks, and then you won't see them again for a year because they're just in a real hard situation, a real difficult situation, and that's fine. Did I see another hand? Yes? What's your most unique thing that you grow in the garden that you might have? Oh, gosh. I had never seen an um, Italian eggplant before, which is this long, skinny... It looks like a giant pepper, but it's purple. What is it? Italian eggplant. We also are growing an herb. Oh, gosh, can I remember the name of this herb? Yes. Yeah, I don't know the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of it. Epizote. It's or oh, epizote. And that's uh, used in Mexican cooking dishes with beans, Basically, it's added to beans. So I'd never heard of that before. I thought that was pretty unusual. Are you needing any more volunteer help? We always need volunteers. We actually we have 127 volunteers, but we always need volunteers because volunteers get sick, they go on vacation. Um, we have many volunteers that would love to work every single day that we're open, but if they get sick, then there's that many slots to fill again. So I don't like I don't allow more than twice a week unless we're really in a pickle. We need to get the food handlers permit if we're going to work No, you don't. No. There has to be uh, one person in the building with a food handlers ca- handler's card, and I have mine. And I'd say about 30 of the volunteers have theirs as well. So we're all covered, and we could always use new volunteers. In fact, um, I am hoping and praying that we're going to be able to be open on Saturdays here shortly. So I would need seven more volunteers just for Saturday mornings for a couple hours. Do, do you have a back time program for the kids? That's a separate program that's not affiliated with Food Share. However, we do offer food to them. We offer food to many different organizations in town. The Backpack Program, the Boys and Girls Club, the Alternative School, Sayus Law West, uh, the Homeless Shelter, Free Lunch. Free lunch. What about homebound seniors? How do you reach them? You know, we don't have a delivery service. Um, If we hear about someone, we will make an occasional exception and go out and give them food. But they can designate someone as well to come for them. Yes, they can. Yeah. Anybody can pick up food for another as long as it's on that client's application. Yes. As to to people, um, but somewhere, and how empty it seems. Show. Yeah. And I yeah. That out. Well, it's uh, it's because um, you know a lot of our food comes from donations from the community and food drives. Um, about forty percent comes from food for Lane County and Eugene. But the reason is, is during the holidays, everyone's thinking about giving, so they think about us, and so we get food and we get money. And in the summer, people are thinking about kayaking and hiking and going on vacation, and they just it just I think it just drops off their radar. I don't think it's that they don't care. I just think it drops off their radar. And then when it starts to be October, November, they're like, oh, season of giving, and they start giving. And we get great donations during the holidays. But, you know, right now, it's... Right now, I'm buying most of the food. So... You mean you oh, no. No, no, no. We go through 50,000 pounds a month. I could never do that. Food. <laughs> I'm generous, but not that generous. No. <laughs> yes. Oh, The Infinite Self by Stuart Wilde. I'm reading it for the second time. I would highly recommend it. It's about reclaiming your personal power by taming the ego, and it gives 33 separate tools to do it. I love that. 
I love that. I would highly recommend it. It's really just when it. I can now recognize when my ego is oh, is taking control, and I'm like, stop it. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you know, we have something called the Bee Pollinator Project, and um, last earlier this spring, we have uh, one of our volunteers made these little bee houses for the native bees. Uh, what I learned was that native bees and bumblebees produce more pollen than regular honeybees, and I had no idea about that. So anyway, we're um, attracting bees in order to pollinate the native uh, flowering bushes and native flowers that we've planted, and also it helps to pollinate more of our garden, the zucchini flowers and all of Oh, and the, the Italian eggplant flowers are purple. They're gorgeous. They're so pretty. Yes. <coughs> Um, he convinced Safeway to donate all the stuff that they were going to throw away, and he had to convince them. It took a long time. <laughs> so he said, I'll show up with a van and at 2 o'clock in the morning and pick up everything you're going to throw away. That's perfectly good food. Uh -huh. Are they still doing that? Uh, you know, when I started about a year and a half ago, they were not doing that any longer. However, there's a large corporation that purchased Safeway and Albertsons, and Albertsons has always been a member of something called the Fresh Alliance Program, and now that Safeway and Albertsons have merged under this larger corporation, Safeway is now part of the Fresh Alliance Program. So just two weeks ago, we started receiving donations from Safeway, and now we get donations every single day, which is great. We get meat deli products, uh, milk, eggs. It's wonderful. So wonderful. And what about the other groceries in town? Like Fred Meyer. Jerry was not able to convince them. Fred Meyer um, donates to us every single day. Okay. Every single day. And Grocery Outlet donates to us every single day. Good. Woody Woodbury, the owner of Grocery Outlet, is one of the most generous men I've ever yeah. met. Yeah. He's amazing. Yes. Um, how does your farm do uh, during the colder winter months? Uh, well, we, we, the head of our garden is the president of our board, Bart Mueller. And he's there every day. It's an all-volunteer effort. And what he does is he puts clover in many of the beds to overwinter the beds. But we also have winter squash. We do have some winter uh, growing vegetables. So we actually produce every single month, all year long. We have two large greenhouses, and we're selling. We have tomatoes. You want to see some tomatoes? <laughs> no, you should come see our tomatoes. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> anyway, so we do. We grow all, all year long. You know, obviously January, February, not quite as much as right now, but we're harvesting hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Tomatoes. <laughs> okay, cut a rock.